Now the fourth part though. Fourth part though is called the painful part of dying. Chima. <sighs> now when the part of death appears to you, abandon all grasping and attachment. Enter into the nature of the clear oral instructions without distraction. Transfer into the unborn space of self-arising awareness. As you are about to leave this compounded body of flesh, flesh and blood, you will know it to be a transitory illusion. Okay. Jima Dalan Chika Pardun Char Dinder Kunla Chasam Hinzen Bamshini Dhamma Sarangala Mayan Juk. Rar Jimmy Nam Kiyan Sampo Difi Shadarli Dan Talak Murtak Jima Yimber Shipper Ji. Now here we, we are going to talk about the pardo of death, okay? It's again, it's called the pain for pardo of dying. Why painful? This pardo is usually painful because when, when we die, mentally, physically, we suffer. I mean, you cannot continue with what you want to do. That's why you suffer, right? <laughs> Death requires you to completely leave everything that you love in your life. <clears throat> Every single item that you possess and everything you like, everything you enjoy, you can't have them anymore. Including your own body, you're going to lose it. You can't have anything anymore. The whole thing is going to disappear. Especially saying goodbye to your own body is extremely difficult. Therefore, death is painful. That's why it's called painful bardo of dying. It's painful because all of these separations, right? <laughs> especially you have a strong attachment to all of this, then especially painful to separate the separations. It's absolutely terrible. Okay? I don't want to freak you out. But this is true. This is so important to understand. Therefore, this life is the pardo, nature pardo of nature, pa, na, natural, natural pardo of this life, illusory pardo of dreaming, meditative, uh, what is the other pardo? The meditation, practice part of meditation, right, is do or die. That's why it's so important. Because, you know, we have great chance to prepare for the next life, if you believe. Maybe you're afraid of your 
the next life because at that time you will not know where the dharma is you may not have chance to find the dharma and meet good teachers again it is very uncertain and sort of you know questionable whether you will have enough memories in your mind to return to a new situation where the teachings are available if you cannot find dharma then maybe you will accumulate a lot of negative karma that is influenced by ignorance then things get worse and worse life after life so death is absolutely difficult if you don't prepare well we all have a life therefore death is certain it is part of life and life is of course related to time which is continuity of movement that means there is nothing that ever lasting permanent there is nothing that everlasting permanent which cannot be destroyed in any circumstances and there is nothing that we see that is endlessly permanent so we always see ourselves changing we are all moving and changing bit by bit everything is changing gaining losing dying and so on and so forth so there is nothing in our daily life that is permanent we cannot find anything that is not always changing so everything seems to come to an end so we can see all this constant change but we still don't recognize the impermanence of life absolutely not otherwise we're not going to west one second if we really have sort of the depths you know like recognition of impermanence of life we are not going to waste our time but we don't recognize then we have all these distractions no discipline <clears throat> if you are able to observe all of these changes and able to think about the nature of impermanence of life then you will understand what death is so we have to think very carefully about it because it has to do with our daily life think about this for example if you have only 3 days left for example then after 3 days definitely you're going to die i'm giving you an example keep this think this deeply not intellectually okay if you, you really have 3 days 3 days then definitely you're going to die 
what will you do within these three days? Think about it. Take a moment, think about it. If you have three days left, only three days left, then you know definitely you're going to die. What will you do? Will you do something special and something meaningful or you just don't care? Would you still try to make a lot of money and buy food for next week, which you don't have because you're going to die three days, but still you're going to buy food for next week? If you have only three days of life, would you be aware of your time constantly? Oh, one minute gone, one hour gone, one day gone, I have two days left. Will you be aware of your time like that constantly, very mindfully? And also be mindful of your all actions? Would you think those three days are so precious, so valuable, so important? Or you, do you just not care? We don't know, right? I just give you three days. But you, you maybe don't have three days. Who knows? Uncertain. That's why Karma Lamba said, don't waste your time. You have, while you have uh, these great opportunities. That's exactly what he meant. You have three days left. Are you constantly aware of this time? Or you just ignore your time and thinking other things like, you know, like past and future. You just completely ignore this present moment that you have three days left, three days life, but you still don't worry about it, be not, you know, and then thinking something else. That's basically what we're doing. So impermanence of life is like that. So you never know how much time you have and it is uncertain. So death is uncertain. <clears throat> death is uncertain. Remember Kardamba masters when they have uh, um, dinner, after the dinner, they, uh, their bowl, they put it upside down and people ask, why do that? Who knows, tomorrow breakfast, maybe I don't need breakfast. I'm going to die tonight. Maybe I will not going to use this bowl anymore. They're aware of their time constantly like that. So now, what is death? Do you really know what is death? I mean, you know, you just, basically that's, you maybe you, you might think, oh, that's a stupid question. What is death? I know death. But death not only happens at the end of life, according to Buddhism, Dying is already there. There are three levels of death. The subtle level of death, middle level of death, and gross level of death. But we only recognize the gross level of death.
we're dying actually every single day. When you're facing death, many people believe, you know, it is complete ending of everything, which means all your habits, all your memories, all your experiences, all your knowledge and, and uh, all the worldly wealth you have and so on and so forth. Many people completely, you know, they believe complete ending of everything. That's what death means to them. The ending of everything that you have collected during this life, right? So everything completely ends. That is what you call death, the end of life. But from the Buddhist point of view, death is not seeing something that is completely the end of everything. But death is another good opportunity to open the door to the next life. It gives you a great hope. It, it is another chance to finish your business. Another chance to reach liberation if you are not able to achieve it in this lifetime. So it is perfect opportunity to develop and achieve your goal. But the moment you think death is the end of everything, that means there is absolute nothing left. And the end of everything completely, that is the Everything end, end of everything completely, that is extreme of uh, nothingness, right? Nihilism or discontinuation, meaning nothing exists anymore after that. If you believe that, that brings a lot of confusion and fear because you don't understand the process of death. Especially you have a very, as I said, limited understanding of what will happen after death. But you just say, I don't believe in anything after death without any good reason. Right? People would say that I'm not a religious person, so I don't believe in future lives. But what if there is a next life? What if there is rebirth? Then you are not prepared for it at all. That is, that is Buddhist called ignorant. And that is very dangerous. So most people even don't want to think about death. Right? They think it is unpleasant. It makes them uncomfortable. So they rather ignore it. But it's not good if you never think about death or if you don't believe in anything after that without a good, good reason. If you have good reason, yeah. It's not good because then you will never understand the meaning of life. Because 
Life is, remember, life is about birth, death, after death, and rebirth. That is life. If you think about the impermanence of life and you are prepared to face death, then death is not necessarily terrible. If you have had some, if you have had amount of uh, practice in the pardo of this life, and if you can let go of your attachment, and grasping, then the part of death is no longer the painful part of dying. No longer painful. It is painful because if, if you can't let go of attachment and grasping all of that, then it makes you suffer. Painful. But if you let go, you have some degree, uh, kind of uh, practice, part of this life, and uh, reduce your attachment, grasping, then it's no longer painful. It's the best opportunity to um, reach enlightenment. Then it's not painful, then it's just the part of dying then the part of death will not necessarily be a time of suffering. Yogis, right? The Dzogchen practitioner yogis, they just love this moment. They're waiting for death because then, you know, right now when we meditate, try to meditate, you know, people say, oh, close your eyes, don't listen to that, that's a distraction. Focus on this and that, right? You try to bring all your senses together and focus on that. That is difficult, right? But when you're dying, all these dissolutions, you know, they dissolve, all your senses dissolve into your mind. Then you have a great opportunity to, you know, without all these distractions, recognize the nature mind. That just basically, when you are dying, we, we will talk more about this, but when you are dying, your, your mind becomes naked. I mean, that's just, you don't have to make it, but it's all these distractions dissolve into the mind. Then yogis, for yogis, they're waiting for that. That's a perfect opportunity for, you know, reaching enlightenment. So we will need to make good preparations before the time comes to pass away. So actually there are many preparations for this, but um, I will not go into too much details here, but I want to talk about some preparations that are important. So if you really want. Now, this is what you should do as you approach the time of death. Whether death comes sooner or later, ultimately, there is no way to stop or skip to it, but you have to give up this body and all your possessions. That is just the nature of the life. The most important thing when the uh, time of death comes is to make sure to eliminate attachment and grasping to everything completely. That's number one. That's why bodhicitta, nature mind, very important. So you have to completely give up attachment in, and, and grasping to everything. Include your own, your own body completely. That's number one. Number two, 
confess all the harmful actions you have committed, as well as any downfalls or vows you may have knowingly or not knowingly committed. Number two, okay? That's number, don't feel sad or panic about death, but try to cultivate a clear sense of satisfaction and be ready to change this life to another good life. I usually think, you know, death is, you know, when, when you have very, very old clothing, you are kind of like really um, tired of them, then you are looking for, buy a new clothing, beautiful new clothing. That's what death is. So you're getting old, your senses are not working well, you can't walk, you can't hear, you can't see, then you're ready to uh, die because then the next life you have all senses working perfectly. So don't be panic, don't feel sad. Okay? Think about all the positive, virtuous things you had. Okay, number, number, number three. Think about all the positive, virtuous things you have done in the past without feeling any trust of arrogance. Dedicate all your merits so that in all your future lives, you may be able to meet the Dharma again with the guidance of great teachers and spiritual friends and with all the most perfect circumstances. That's number three. Four, also do not forget your masters, whoever you have great devotion to, or whoever you feel the deepest sort of connection through your practice with the confident trust that your master is the embodiment of all the precious source of refuge and pray for the fulfillment of your aspirations. At the actual moment of death, it will be difficult to meditate on something new or unfamiliar. Therefore, you must prepare and choose meditation that you are familiar with. Okay. It is also very important that you train yourself to think when the time of death comes, I will do this and this and this and this. You know, I will not allow any negative thoughts to enter my mind. Then as you pass away, you should devote your thoughts to the meditation as much as you possibly can. Whether it is remembering the bodhicitta, remembering your great masters, or meditating on the nature of mind, if you prepare all this practice and develop some experience during your daily life, the nature part of this life, then it will be that much more effective and beneficial at the actual moment of death. 
Okay? Keep this in your mind. Think about it. That's what we call preparation. When your time to die, if you create new, try to understand, uh, meditate on new, something new, it will be very hard. So you need to prepare now so that that moment of death, it comes in your mind automatically, that meditation. Then you can focus on it. Then you're easy to reduce your attachment to grasping because of that meditation. So if you think this kind of preparations um, for death are important, then right now is the perfect time to practice it. Uh, there are two reasons we have to think more about bardo of death. The first reason is sooner or later, death will happen to us and it can happen at any time. It is very uncertain. Whenever there is a birth, then there is death. When our time has run out and at the point of death, nothing can stop us from dying, right? So we all know death will come one day. But we always think it will be some time in the future, right? We also understand the life gets shorter every month, every day, every minute, but we also don't have enough to think about it deeply. So we always think we are the same person continuing from birth to death. We have this permanent thought. So we, we spend all of our time hoping and worrying about our future, right? As if we're going to live forever. So this permanent idea is our bad habits of self-grasping and ignorance. So we have to remember sooner or later, death will come. So we need to think about it and prepare for it. That's number one. The second reason is when you're facing death, the teachings say that this pardo is painful because at the time of death, we may become overwhelmed by feeling of sadness, fear and regret, you know, it's because of attachment and grasping, holding onto the appearances of this life. And also the process of dying usually is painful because at the time of the, the, the dissolutions of the element, when we begin to lose them, lose contact with the appearances of this life, we experience some degree of physical suffering. Therefore, the process of die, dying is definitely painful, right? Um, generally speaking, when we are born, we are born in depends upon the five elements. You know that, earth, fire, water, air, space, right? When we are born, these five elements come together and our body comes into existence. It's like a tree, grow a tree. 
five elements there. And at the time of death, these five elements are dissolving into each other. And through their dissolution, this life ends, and the body and consciousness separate. That could, be all, uh, could also be painful. At the conclusion of this dissolution process, your life ends. That means your body and mind separate from Buddhist point of view. So I'm going to talk about these dissolutions of elements a um, little bit, very briefly. So when your body is given up slowly, all of the dissolutions will inevitably occur. Whether you recognize them or not. Maybe these dissolutions occur right now. You know, when like a sudden death experience completely different, right? The dissolutions are not experienced at all in those cases. You just black out and you just become unconscious right away. But there's still, you know, there are dissolutions for sure, but you don't probably experience them. That's a different situation. But if your death is normal, then you will experience experience the, the dissolutions. So generally speaking, there are three signs when people die. The outer, inner, and secret signs. The outer signs are when you lose your physical sort of strength because they are the five external elements and there are five internal elements. So as the five elements become unbalanced and dissolve into each other, you will know it because there are signs that appear due to the form aggregates dissolving. For example, the power of the, the uh, earth elements decline. A sign that this is happening is that the body loses its strength and feels very happy and so on and so forth. This is called, this is called earth dissolving into water. As for dissolution of the sensation aggregate, at this point, the power of the water element declines. A sign of it is that the moisture in the body dries up. Then your sensations are no longer functioning. like you can't hear, you can't taste, etc. This is called water dissolving into fire. Your mouth dry, dry, your nose dry. And when the aggregates of perception dissolve, at this time, the power of the fire elements declines. A sign of this is that your body temperature decreases. 
as the fire element dissolves. That means your food is no longer digest. Also, you cannot recognize your family members or your friends. This is called fire dissolving into wind. Then the aggregate of karmic formation dissolves. At this time, the power of the wind element declines. A sign of this is that the inner and outer breath cannot function properly, and also your voice declines. And uh, at this point, very soon, your heart stops, and then the external breath ceases. This is called wind dissolving into space. At this point, all of the consciousness related to five aggregates dissolve into the mental consciousness. And the mental consciousness gradually dissolves into the alaya vijnana. So this is the most fundamental aspect of consciousness. Okay, those are the outer signs, which is the lose of your physical strength. Then the inner signs are about the state of your mind and the dissolution of your mental consciousness. When people are dying, they feel mentally heavy and they feel like they're sinking into the earth, their voice changes and lose its strength, their eyes lose focus, everything blurry, appearance become unclear and foggy, the sound they hear feels like it's from very far away, and so on and so forth. But according to the Pardo teachings, not everyone has exactly the same dissolution experiences. But we all undergo these dissolutions. Each of us may experience the process of a little bit differently because the system of our body and mind are slightly different, right? But these dissolutions are inevitable. When my father passed away, I was with him for 24 hours. And I think he experienced all the dissolutions of elements, both outer signs and inner signs, almost exactly according to the Bardo teachings. Because I investigated, I was with him, all the signs, the, his actions and the, the way he looked and everything, almost exactly the same according to the Bardo teachings. I can see how he went through the process of outer science, the inner science. But I don't know how he experienced the, the secret science, you know? The secret science are after the dissolution of elements and aggregates and after the outer breath has stopped, but the inner breathing is still taking place. And then when the mental consciousness dissolves into the alaya consciousness, after that, there are three experiences that will happen. 
they are called the three experience of appearance, nangwa, increase, chitpa, and attainment, nyetap, nangwa, chitopsum. This is a very huge, big topic in tantric teachings, Vajrayana teachings. It's very important, but it's kind of complicated if you don't know anything about tantric teachings. But these three experiences are inevitable. This is when you will experience the color-like whiteness, redness, and blackness. When all your concepts have ceased, the outer sign is that all appearances become like pure space, like the sky free of clouds and pervaded by moonlight. You know, this is called the white appearances, karlam in Tibetan. Then sign of the next stage is like a pure sky pervaded by sunlight. This is called red appearances, marlam. Then after that, your consciousness kind of faints and fades away. The other sign is that you will experience blackness called the black appearances. Okay? These are the secret sign. Then the moment you wake up from that faint state or that blackness, the inner appearance is nothing, but there is no conceptuality. That is free of all projections that appears for, a, for an instant. That moment is very crucial moment. That is this yogi's waiting for. Because in the Dzogchen teaching, it says that when this actual clear light of the mind appears for the great practitioners, there is the great possibility of enlightenment right there. If we have developed a recognition of the nature mind through practicing Dzogchen meditation, it is said that you will naturally recognize your nature mind when this experience appears. You don't have to meditate. It, it just naturally appears to you. If you recognize it, then enlightenment is right there. This is described as being like a river meeting the ocean. Because having been introduced to natural mind before, so you will recognize it without any effort. You have, you have no this five agar Gets. You don't have any of these five senses, whatever. You have this just naked, luminous, the mind appears at that, that moment. So you don't need any effort. If you recognize, that's it. It's like a child recognizing the mother without any hesitation. Imagine you haven't seen your mother in years and years. But one day you are in a crowded room, even though the room is filled with hundreds of people. The moment you see your mother, you know, without any hesitation, it is her, right? You don't have to think about it. You don't have to investigate at all. I have seen this happen with uh, penguins on nature shows. Even though all the penguins looked exactly 
same, right? Somehow the baby penguins are able to recognize their mother out of thousands of thousands of other penguins. So now your guru introduced nature mind and you have some degree of practice the experience. And then when this secret sign appeared to you, you just recognize it. It's like that, child recognizes mother. According to the Dzogchen teachings, this is called the mother luminosity, the ground luminosity, that is the transcendent wisdom that is primarily intrinsic to ourselves. Then there is also a child luminosity or the path luminosity that we are right now, we are trying to meditate, right? So when, when our guru introduced us to luminosity and we meditate on it, the nature part of this life, we meditate on it, that is the path luminosity, we call it, which is like child. So when these two, mother-like luminosity and child-like luminosity, when these two, sometimes um, uh, they call ground and path. The ground is the mother luminosity. The path is the child luminosity. They are unified. That is called the meeting of mother and child luminosity or ground in path luminosity. So the Dzogchen meditators, when this sign, secret sign appears, they recognize it, then liberation is there. Dzogchen master Longchenba says that when consciousness dissolves into this luminosity, at that moment, <clears throat> all the gross and subtle conceptual thoughts cease. And if you recognize the luminosity, then you're liberated right there. OK. I'm going. Um, I will talk more about these things in the next session. Now, meditate for a few minutes. Before you meditate, drink your tea. Begin by getting comfortable with body in your mind. And check your mind to see what emotions and thoughts are present in your mind. Maybe you of all uh, right now, this secret sign, the luminosity appear right now in your mind. <laughs> but if you don't, you have emotions and thoughts in present in your mind, then try to recognize now we just talk a little bit about pain for pardo of dying. So think about what is the meaning of pardo of dying? What is the, what is death? What do you believe in death, death? What is the essence of practice of this pardo? Karmalangba's teaching in the root text says, when the pardo of death appears to you, abandon all grasping and attachment, right? That's the point.
how to abandon or grasp an attachment. When you are facing death and time of death comes, what does that mean to you? Does that mean completely the ending of everything completely? There is absolute nothing left? Is that what you call death? Or do you believe that the death is not seeing something that is completely end of everything? What do you think about death? What is death? Do you really understand what is death? As I said, usually people don't want to think about the death. As a Buddhist practitioner, it is important to think about it and prepare for it. So, are you preparing for your death? It's not because of you are old. It's not because of you are unhealthy person. Doesn't matter. What is death? Is your attachment and your grasping to have very strong this kind of desire? Are you what what are you attached to what? Your body? Your family? Are you ready? If death happens right now, are you ready? So as I said, if you are a good practitioner, then death is like change your old clothes. So you're looking forward to it. It's no longer painful. The part of death will not necessarily be time of suffering. So again, you, rem you need to remember the most important when the time of death comes is Eliminate attachment and grasp into everything completely. There is, that, there is nothing that is permanent, includes your body. Everything is impermanent, so you should not allow any negative thoughts to enter your mind when you are facing death. Okay? So please think about what is death. Sometimes I visualize A channel, it stands in the very middle of my body. At the top, it opens straight out into the aperture of the top of your head. And the channel at your heart center, you visualize sphere of light, energy, that is light, red in color, the essence of, essence of your consciousness, okay? Then visualize above your head, whoever you have the great devotion, whoever you feel 
the depths connection, your master or Buddha. Then you focus on the red light at your heart center. Then it goes up slowly, slowly and coming out from the top of your head and dissolving into the whatever you visualize there, maybe Buddha Amitabha, maybe Pamasambhava, maybe your lineage, whatever. You dissolve into their heart and your mind merged and in union. Then without thinking anything, just to focus on that union. So you do that and the rest in that state until your next thought arise. And when your thought comes, you go back and practice again. This is really helpful if you believe yourself because you're ready to leave your body behind. So you have to focus on your mind and your mind is unsupportable. Buddha nature. So you meditate on that and rest your mind without, without thinking anything. That's how you reduce your attachment and grasping, right? So if, when you're not thinking anything, then you don't have attachment grasping at that moment then your mind is completely naked. Okay? So, think about death. Think about how strong your attachment and grasping. Then meditate on this channel and then rest in that state and relax, try to recognize your awareness and rest on that as much as you can. So five minutes. <laughs> 